So I recently saw a video of somebody using stylized normal maps. So this is the idea of having kind of a normal map and then you paint over it and you have this kind of really interesting effect that comes from these like 3D painted aspects. Um, and so I wanted to try and reproduce that because it cool, looks cool. <laughs> One of the things that comes up though is you need artistic skill and patience. <laughs> and I'm interested in stable diffusion because I may lack some of the artistic styles. <laughs> um, so to do this manually, uh, basically all you're doing is you're taking the normal map um, and then you're painting over it and you're using kind of nearby colors. So you're, you're using the color picker and then painting and then color picking and then painting. And then once you put this into something like Blender um, and you light it up, it'll actually like you'll be able to see those brush strokes by the lighting changes. And so it has this really kind of neat um, visual aspect to it. So that's the basic manual. But now how can we actually do this faster? So like how can we maybe do this with AI and get some kind of more interesting results or kind of weirder results and like yeah let's try that out so we're going to be using the depth map extension and we're going to be using the standalone mode to create some uh, AI normal maps. So I found that the 512 by 512 works the best for normal maps. If you go higher, you get a lot of the edges, but you lose a lot of the kind of overarching structure. So um, I was finding 5512 to be the kind of one that works the nicest. It's also really useful to send the normal map that you produce with the depth map extension and send that back through stable diffusion because it just fixes a lot of the mistakes that make it made. Um, so it kind of clears up a lot of those those kind of sharp edges. This is a really good use case for the SDXL refiner model. So that's the model that's kind of the second part of the XL model. And it does a really good job of kind of upsampling images at high resolutions. And you have to put it on a really low strength setting. So something like point something like 0.1 or 0.15. And it does a really like I, I'm just impressed by it. <laughs> So I was using a lot of this one Loro impasto, and that's basically where there's brush strokes that are really noticeable. So very heavy brush strokes, and it creates these really interesting normal maps. You do need to keep the denoising strength really small, um, and then up the styling a lot. So um, kind of really heavy prompts, but then really light denoising is kind of how I was finding it to work. Um, yeah. So within Blender, basically what we do is we add a plane mesh. Um, it can just be the really simplified one, and then we add the material, we add the image to the uh, base color and then we add the normal map and the normal map it's really helpful to have a normal map node in between the image and the actual um, thing and then we'll change it to object space normal um, and then you can change the, the strength around uh, some things to also pay attention to you, it's really good to have like the raw um, values so for the most part this does some pre-processing so having raw is good and then also sometimes on the normal map mode it's good to go down to like the 0.5 because that just uh, makes it so that the normals aren't as harsh uh, and yeah that's basically basically it. Um, so I've mostly been keeping this to 2D, but it does work in 3D as well. Um, sometimes it's a little bit less noticeable because um, oftentimes 3D has its own geometry and so the normal map sometimes are a little bit lighter. Uh, but yeah, you can do it there as well and it gives pretty interesting results. Um, yeah. This X-Wing, it's like, it is, I've been working with this model long enough that like, I know it's working, but I don't know if you can see it. I, I was starting to have too much fun with having uh, women with old men shadows and it like, <laughs> just looks kind of funny so um i spent a lot of time with that but like you can also do some like more serious things with um creating buildings that look more like paintings and kind of um i think especially when you start moving into the 3d space sometimes a lot of ai images can feel very flat and so this is just a way of kind of adding some extra details there um i think there's a lot of other ways to add this with um low resolution depth maps i there's some experimenting i want to do with that as well but this is i think a good resting place for today so that's all i have for today thanks and have a great day.